This project consists of a two-part video. In part one, I construct a prototype to meet the immediate need that I had for diagnosing a wiring issue with my RV. In part two, I upgrade the breaker box by adding more functionality. I don't normally do a step-by-step -step video on a project that I'm doing. However, with this project, it's a little bit more involved. And so I'm going to do a step-by-step-ish. And so here we have all the components basically that is needed for the project. And I'm just going to kind of go over it a little bit quickly. The first thing though is I encourage you to go onto my website because for projects like this, I always have a web page that's associated with the project where you can get much more information. And this certainly is a case. Uh, for example, I am starting to make a sheet like this for any kind of a project and it basically has all of the uh, information that you need for the project. It gives you a schematic diagram, it gives you how the, the uh, connectors are oriented, it even gives you drilling patterns for the various components and uh, build materials and so on. Go to my website and this is a free download of course. So basically what we have here is just the assembly of components and I'll just go through them one by one. Uh, first thing is the case. This is a Hammond 1444-9553 and again I'll have that on here. And then I have as an option if you don't want to build my front panel you can use this. This is uh, the top that goes with the case and it is actually a separate purchase. So you could buy this and drill your own holes without having to buy the rather expensive uh, front panel that I'm using. This is a connector that would be the vehicle and connector, seven-way connector. And I did skip ahead a little bit and put this pigtail on it. I actually cut it off from some excess of this uh, pigtail. And so I just wired it up. This is just a Kurt standard everyday uh, vehicle connector. And then I've got the other pigtail that plugs into the trailer. And this is about a nine footer. And again, I just lopped a foot off here. And I have this, what's called a cable gland that fits on the end of this cable. And it'll allow you to just drill a hole and put this in through the chassis and you can get a relatively watertight fit. One thing I did notice though is there are several different wiring diagrams depending on the type of trailer you have. There is an RV standard and a trailer standard and then there are some other standards that are just commercial uh, vehicles and things like that that are different. I went with a color code that is designated in the Lippert manual that I have for my uh, trailer chassis, which is the RV standards. And then I have a little Alco switch. This is a six position switch just with a, a uh, nice little knob on it. And these are banana jacks and I have actually seven of them. Here's the rest of them. One for each color of the wiring harness. Also, uh, I bought some LEDs. Now these LEDs are 12 volt LEDs. They're, these are quite small actually, but they'll work. And they are LED assemblies. And what that means is that it has an LED plus a resistor built in. And next I've got a 10 pole terminal board. And this is where I'm going to wire both ends of the pigtails onto the terminal board. And I'm gonna scare this terminal board into the bottom of the case so that'll give us a nice place to, to mount everything. Uh, I have a voltmeter and this is a matching ammeter and this is a 0 to 30 amp. Now when you get a 30 amp ammeter you have to have a external shunt and that's what this is. And this is going to go on the, the brake line because the brake line can be up to almost 20 amps uh, depending on if you have two or three axles. And then this ammeter hooks also here and what that does is that that way you don't have to have big fat wires going to the ammeter and then finally to dress it off I've got these little uh, handles and these are just equipment rack handles well now to make the prototype I have to start cutting out some sheet metal and I'm going to cut out the top piece first 
the best way that I found to cut this out is with this tool called a nibbler. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a pilot hole the size of the head here and then I'll show you how this works. So I've cut a couple pilot holes here and take a nibbling tool and insert it behind it and then basically what it does is it just nibbles a little piece of metal off each time you make the cut and then you just follow the outline and then you're done. This is for the vehicle side connector, sub pin connector. This will be for the trailer side. And then a couple holes for feet and a terminal strip. Well, the next step, I suppose, is uh, we can put the four feet on. All right. Next comes the gland for the trailer end cable. This next one's a vehicle end connector. Then we're going to install the terminal strip. And now to continue on, we're going to put the trailer side cable on here. And that just fits in this gland. Next step is we're going to put some terminals on the end of these and we're going to wire up that terminal box. So what we just need to do is to twist these on and then with our crimpers find the matching color. We got yellow, blue, and red. Okay, I'm just going to do the rest of them. Now that we have terminators on each one of the wires, then we can use uh, my schematic here and then just wire them up as it shows here. Alright, now you can see here we've got uh, all of the wiring done on the terminal board. Black goes through to black, white goes through to white. Blue is split. Blue comes in here and then blue comes in here and they're not connected together. But then we go back to yellow to yellow, brown to brown, red to red, and green to green. So essentially I've just connected this uh, socket to this cable except for the blue wire. Now this is the brake wire and the reason I've split that is because when I put the ammeter shunt in, the shunt is going to make this circuit. So that will effectively put the ammeter in series with the brake line. And here's the front panel all cut out. And when you install the ammeter and voltmeter, be mindful that these threads are just in plastic, so just snug them up. Don't, you don't want to over tighten them. And I've completed the necessary wiring to the front panel. This is the shunt, and the shunt goes to the meter here and here. And then these wires go from the shunt to the brake line. And since the brake line is here, I tap into the voltmeter with the positive side. And then the negative side goes to the box. So for the prototype, pretty straightforward. And finally, I have the front panel wired to the rest of the box. And we'll button it up and we'll be done. This then completes the prototype of the trailer wiring harness breakout box.